Miratech Remote is a continuous equipment monitoring system. The hardware itself is plug and play with fully pre-configured settings, and internet connectivity can be provided to the device through cellular, ethernet, or Wi-Fi connections. The data recorded by the hardware is sent to the cloud, and the basic service offering includes a minimum of one year of data retention, with options to extend that out further. The device itself includes local data buffer to prevent data loss in case of an intermittent internet connection. A single Miratech remote gateway is capable of monitoring up to eight individual assets at once, and the system supports adding non-Miratech equipment to the platform. Today we'll be having a look at the web portal for Miratech Remote, which allows users to quickly and easily check the status of their field equipment from anywhere in the world. It animates data in real time and allows users to interact with their data in new and powerful ways. On screen, you can see the login page. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. Landing page is called the dashboard and allows users to see all assets tied to their account. In this demonstration, I only have two assets, one of which is active and one of which is in an unknown state. You can see these on the right-hand side here under status. Users who have many assets and want to look at a specific subset can choose that from the region, division, or subdivision menu selection. They can also type in the asset name or some part of the asset name into this field box to just search through the list and find exactly what that is that they need. Another way to view the assets tied to your account is to change from the grid dashboard to the map dashboard. This dashboard automatically zooms in to show all assets on the account in a geographic view. You can hover over a specific asset to see its current status, along with its name and local weather conditions. The color of this icon is directly related to the current status. We can see additional details on this particular asset by either clicking on the dropped pin in the map view or by selecting the asset from the grid dashboard menu. The status page is designed to look just like the overview screen of the asset in question. Some additional information is provided to the right of that overview screen, which is helpful for the user to see the current state of the asset. In this case, we are monitoring an ASUS 3 Open Loop Controller, or OLC. You can see the title of that asset here. We can see the current state of all of the inputs in these various cells. Now, keep in mind that this is a demonstration asset. These inputs are provided by a series of switches and dials, so not all of this information makes perfect logical sense. However, this demonstration does show a real asset measuring these inputs and sending that data to the cloud in real time. In the center here are some critical alarms that help highlight to the user specific issues that may need to be addressed. On the right hand side is a graph showing the last seven days of post SCR NOx emissions. Now, we are still putting on the finishing touches for this status page. Some of the items we will be continuing to work on include additional coloring indicators for each input, more detailed alarm values, as well as adding the post SCR target set points to the graph on the right hand side. This will allow the user to see how the system is performing overall, as well as quickly check the treated emissions compared to the target set point. The next page to highlight is the history section. This page allows the user to interact and explore their data in real time. There are a number of ways a user might wish to animate their data, and in this video I will be showing two common examples. In the first example, I would like to quickly create a compliance report based on the last few days of runtime. I begin by setting my start date and my end date, and then I update the graph. I now choose the specific variables I would like to see. In this case, I'm going to choose differential pressure, engine load percent, and outlet temperature. And then I'm going to click update. Perfect, that is exactly the data I needed, but I need this data in another format. So I select the menu option here, and I can download this in a number of different formats. CSV or XLS are by far the most common choices. 
In the second example, I'd like to quickly inspect data to better understand an unexpected event. First, I select a different date range and update the date. The next thing I'm going to do is to add some additional information to the chart. Perhaps this is too much information, and I'd like to quickly streamline this view. I simply click the variables or pens on the right hand side which I'd like to defocus from the graph. Perfect. Now I'd like to understand something strange is happening in this time zone right here. So we click and zoom, and I can hover over the graph to see readings at specific points in time for each variable that I've selected on the right. You can see here there's a moment in time the NOx values were not being recorded. Perhaps I want to go see why. There are a number of additional variables that might explain this information. Perhaps the asset changed through various states or modes, and that is why the NOx sensor stopped reporting data. I will go back to my pens. I'm going to remove all of the selections and simply leave the NOx values themselves. I'll then go to the set of modes and turn on mode run so that we can see what has happened to the run mode during this time. We can see for both of these instances the system was not in mode run and then it returned to mode run and that momentary loss of running mode is what resulted in loss of data. The event is short in duration, and I know a technician was on site around that time, so I'm satisfied with this answer. Those are two ways the history section can be used, and there are a number of other opportunities to animate the data that we can explore in future videos. Next, I'd like to check the notifications that are being provided for this asset. I go to the Notifications tab, and I can see there's already one set of notifications defined. Let's go edit this notification. On the top right, you can see which assets are included in this notification. I can quickly set this notification to apply as a default for all assets within a given category. I can select which rule bucket this notification might apply to. In this case, I only have the alarm rule, but there are a variety of rules that can be configured. I can leave some quick notes here on the web portal to describe what this rule is supposed to do. I can receive this notification by email or text and I can limit how often I will receive the notification. For example, if an alarm is active on this device and remains active continuously for a long period of time, this email notification will be limited to only send a notice once per day regarding the condition. Some rules the user configures may require more immediate action, and the user may choose to receive the notification repeatedly at faster intervals to ensure that action is taken quickly. The actual email or text message will contain this content, and the email or text messages to which it will be sent are shown here. I hope you enjoyed this live demo of Miratech Remote. We are excited by the possibilities this new product creates, and I have quite a few ideas on how to develop this product offering further.